Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first here, hazardous weather graphic. Uh, we've got a uh, coastal flood warning out here for the Yukon Delta Coast. Um, yeah, coastal flood warning for the Yukon Delta Coast. Uh, that's out until 6 a.m. Saturday morning there and uh, possible minor beach erosion, minor coastal flooding or flooding until, or overnight tonight until it ends tomorrow. And moving on to the, up to the, uh, well, St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait coastal areas, there's a high surf advisory out until 6 a.m. for six to eight foot seas, and that uh, giving tides a little, about three to four feet higher than usual. So it could be some minor beach erosion due to that uh, through tonight and then improving late tonight into tomorrow as the winds begin to die off. Pretty gusty winds, they went from 40 to 45 and possibly even 50 miles an hour here. So she had in advance of this front here uh, along the Yukon Delta coast and uh, up to Kotzebue, gusts 40 miles an hour this afternoon and uh, even stronger winds, Point Hope and Cape Lisbon, kind of a classic high wind pattern for them up there at the lows tracking up here to the west of the area and then the front's approach and the strong winds in advance of the front. Anyway, 62 miles an hour peak wind gusts at Cape Lisbon today and 50 miles an hour at uh, Point Hope and Chatulik River had 52 mile an hour wind gusts. And this uh, more of a wind producer than rain producer, only about two tenths of an inch, and that was the heaviest amounts, fell and that was, uh, well, Cold Bay, 15 hundredths of an inch, Felt Tin City and over at Nome, and then back to about two tenths of an inch up here along the northwest coast. Much lighter amounts inland here, and this all mostly just mid and high level clouds trying to advance eastward. And uh, got the cloud shield here associated with the ahead of the on the north side of the next storm is starting to develop down there. A lot of moisture with that, but uh, not so much today. Much in the way of any precipitation here. Very light amounts over the Alaska Peninsula. And eastern interior, partly mostly sunny this afternoon, uh, definitely dry, light winds contrasting to the weather in the west. And that extended all, all the way down into the eastern North Gulf Coast. Looked uh, mostly sunny for the panhandle this afternoon with uh, fairly light winds as well. And you can see this uh, low center is tracking due north here and kind of a split in the flow here. <clears throat> and that's, you can see, breaking the system apart right in this area. And this portion of the front will continue to weaken tonight as the next storm uh, organizes itself and pulls a slug of moisture northward beginning late tonight and through tomorrow. Anyway, here's about the position of that uh, frontal boundary. And again, the gusty winds in advance of the front here, anywhere from 40 to 50 miles an hour, as I said, from actually the Alaska Peninsula here all the way up to 60 or more there on the northwest capes here of the western Arctic coast but not really heavy or nothing notably heavy here at rainfall wise with that system and uh, start gaining some breaks in the cloudiness. You head into the central interior, but still mostly cloudy here on down across the areas of south central Alaska and then you get into the mostly sunny conditions on the east side from uh, roughly the central Tanana Valley across, uh, well, all the way into Canada, a big high pressure area there over the Northwest Territories, another one here over the Northeast Pacific and low pressure off to the southeast or near or just uh, east of Vancouver Islands, that's giving offshore flow, making it dry and mostly sunny across the Panhandle. For tonight, that uh, pattern will continue, uh, mostly clear and variably cloudy in the interior, but uh, moisture is starting to advance eastward there, especially along the southern slopes of the Brooks Range. Also warmer air, so just mixed rain and snow, and don't look for a whole lot there on the lee side of the <coughs> Brooks Range areas for uh, tonight or into tomorrow, so very light amounts there. In fact, actually the precipitation will be quite light along this frontal boundary. Wind's starting to diminish now and then those uh, high surf advisories, coastal flood advisories end by 6 a.m. tomorrow. 
In the meantime, we got a warm front spreading a good uh, moderate amounts of rain up toward Kodiak Island late tonight, as well as the Alaska Peninsula, and stays kind of wet and unsettled out over the Bering Sea with a weak system keeping it damp with some IFR for the western Aleutian areas. Otherwise, uh, no change for the southeast coast. Moving on to tomorrow for Saturday, look for mostly sunny conditions. Eastern third of the state there, possibly even the Arctic coast could see some clearing. Uh, definitely dry, definitely light winds. That'll extend again, sunny skies across the panhandle under high pressure both at the surface and aloft. Warm front uh, here with this system now tracking northward across the Alaska Peninsula late tomorrow morning into western Bristol Bay. That's going to bring uh, moderate amounts of rain into the southwest interior here with heavy rainfall expected along and on the upslope areas of the Alaska Range. And that'll be spreading to Kodiak Island tomorrow afternoon. Rain becoming moderate to heavy. Uh, somewhat of an increase in the winds. Also getting a little gusty here, starting to at least get the pattern for uh, south central Alaska. Uh, I might be a little fast bringing the rain this far north by tomorrow afternoon, but uh, looks more likely for western Prince William Sound up the south coast of the Kenai Peninsula areas, and then also in the upslope areas of the western Alaska range, increasing rainfall. I don't think we'll get any in Anchorage, definitely not Palmer or uh, maybe even not Kenai there, but everywhere else looking pretty wet. Just showers of this front here. Still a little breezy, but uh, wind's definitely lighter. And uh, so this system takes over, kind of sapping the moisture and energy out of that northern one. And a couple of troughs keep it uh, occasionally wet there over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And for the second day of the weekend, Sunday, we've got high pressure developing over the far western Bering Sea ahead of a big storm rolling into the Russian Far East from the Sea of Okhotsk. And then a trough here over the eastern bearing, mostly or cloudy skies, areas of light rain, drizzle, showers, fog, or one of the three there, all the way down to the eastern Aleutians, west to the Adak Atka area. Uh, could see some afternoon clearing possibly there. And that uh, regional low now swings up to the western north slope across the Brooks Range in the afternoon. <clears throat> this front, uh, areas of rain in the uh, upslope areas of the terrain, that's about it here otherwise dry in the downslope areas. In fact, there's a wind advisory out for the eastern Alaska range uh, from 10 p.m. Sunday night to 10 p.m. I'm sorry, 10 p.m. Saturday night to 10 p.m. Sunday night for 25, 35 mile, 25 to 35 mile an hour winds with gusts uh, above 60 miles an hour. Uh, so lee side delta, don't look for much precipitation there, even into the upper Tanana Valley of 40 mile country. Different story here for the North Gulf Coast, heavy rains push northeastward there, Prince William Sound, Cordova, and eventually into Yakutat with increasing chances of rain or showers for the central coast of the Panhandle. Rain pretty likely up there for Elfin Cove, increasing clouds over the remainder of the southeast coast. And uh, <clears throat> for the Arctic coast, uh, again, warm air coming northward, so that kind of negates or erases any uh, snowfall chances there, even for the Brooks Range, but uh, downslope Southerly winds there may clear it out. It could be a mostly sunny afternoon with mild temperatures up there over the eastern Arctic coast. Otherwise, uh, cooling conditions, or I'm sorry, warming on the overnight lows here with the moisture pushing eastward after lows in the 20s uh, tonight, or yeah, 20s tonight, they'll be in the uh, lower 30s uh, for uh, sat Sunday morning. In fact, let's go to the temperatures. Lows tonight uh, in the 20s, mid 20s over the eastern interior, lower 20s there for the eastern Brooks Range and lower 30s, eastern Arctic coast, with uh, mid 40s down across the western, and western part of the state to upper 40s out along the coastline. 45 to 50 here for your lows for the uh, Alaska Peninsula, and uh, upper 20s to near 40 for the Panhandle. And then your afternoon highs, uh, upper 50s to maybe lower 60s here for the southeast coast with lots of sunshine, and uh, 40s to lower, maybe mid 50s for the eastern interior. Again, even the Copper River Basin with a uh, fair amount of sun. 40s for the Arctic coast, upper 40s on the west side there, and temperatures 60, call it 65 for your highs uh, along the uh, north side of the Aleutian, or the east side of the Aleutian Range and the north side of the Alaska Peninsula there with those uh, winds and warm air aloft, mid 50s for the Fox Islands. Looking at the uh, low temperatures for Sunday morning, milder with the uh, clouds and moisture streaming eastward here a little to a greater extent than it will be definitely tonight. So this looking for upper 20s to maybe mid-30s for the lows from the Copper River Basin northward there, except for the Brooks Range, still down in the 20s for the Atka, or I'm sorry, for the uh, 
Anatuvik and Adigan and over toward Arctic Village areas. And lower 30s, about, let's see, Kaktovik, the only place that may make the frost point, otherwise milder here to the west with that warm air pushing northward. And lows in the 50 to 55 degree range <coughs> for Bristol Bay. Upper 30s, lower 40s for the Panhandle. And not much change again in the 40s there uh, for the Aleutians. And highs for Sunday afternoon, 55 to 60 for Bristol Bay in the 50s, South Central Alaska, 40s to mid-50s here, Tanana Valley, and lower 40s all the way out to the Arctic coast with uh, temperatures again, 50s to lower 60s across the uh, Panhandle, but rain and clouds on the increase here. And uh, lower 50s, about all you can make with the heavy rains that are going to be moving into the North Gulf Coast areas, but still on the mild side there for Kodiak with a high near 60. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Flying weather for Saturday morning. We've got uh, all, I, all marginal VFR here, Aleutians uh, northward through the Bering Strait, and some of that coming inland here over the western part of the state and along the south side of the Brooks Range. VFR, central interior here, right on down to the uh, North Gulf Coast, into the Gulf of Alaska. VFR across the panhandle under high pressure and IFR here sliding on up across Kodiak Island later tonight and early tomorrow and just some areas of IFR out here over the uh, south central Bering Sea and that becomes a little more widespread especially on uh, the Bering Strait there in toward Nome and uh, western Brooks Range south slopes and Duong Mountains and that pattern holds through tomorrow afternoon increase in IFR here Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island is beginning to slide on up into and along, IFR that is, along the uh, western, eastern slopes of the western Alaska range. Should stay VFR the entire day, Cook Inlet, eastward there across Prince William Sound. Some of this moisture looks like it's going to get up actually into uh, western Prince William Sound, uh, bringing some uh, rainfall in tomorrow afternoon. So that marginal zone probably could be drawn in over western Prince William Sound there. Otherwise, VFR for the southeast coast. And for Sunday morning, we've got uh, now IFR into Bristol or into, <laughs> into Prince William Sound, IFR Eastern Bristol Bay, uh, up toward uh, Western Iliamna Lake, and the Western Interior here, uh, marginal to IFR, North Slope, uh, Central and East Side, as well as the Arctic Coast, VFR, and an area IFR here out in the uh, middle of nowhere there in the Central Bering Sea, and some marginal VFR, Central Eastern Aleutians. Outlook for Sunday afternoon, big swath of IFR now uh, along and south of the Brooks Range across the Kobuk, Koyukuk, Upper Yukon Valley areas and also into the central interior. Uh, kind of breaking out right on the edge there around Fairbanks to North Pole, Delta, uh, looking at with those downsloping winds, um, probably VFR south side, same thing going on here in the Copper River Basin, socked in IFR along the coast range, North Gulf Coast, eastward here to Yakutat, VFR for the southeast coast. Anthro passes tomorrow in the Tufik and Adigan, marginal VFR at times, uh, especially on the southern approach of both passes. Lake Clark and Merrill becoming marginal VFR with increasing IFR first for Lake Clark and then for Merrill later on, and that'll be on the eastern entrance uh, for both of those passes. And rainy, uh, not quite as bad. VFR to start becoming marginal in the afternoon. Windy, VFR, the entire day Saturday. As well as Isabel, looks good. Mintasta, good VFR. Tanita, same forecast, VFR. And Portage, uh, VFR, uh, fair chance it'll go marginal in the afternoon as some moisture and precipitation moves on up, especially on the eastern entrance. And for Chilkoot and White, though, good VFR. Freezing levels. Got 12,000 feet here up to about Sitkanaka Akiok there on uh, Kodiak Island. So very warm air aloft here up in across Bristol Bay and uh, about 6,000 feet or so for the Panhandle and sloping down to maybe 2,000 feet here over the northeast interior areas and then down to 4,000 feet uh, central Aleutians and a good chunk of the western bearing. And for icing, that moisture is sliding on up uh, south to north flow here, pulling that warm air up. So we've got probably uh, considerable moderate rime icing here above 10,000 feet in this area, those high freezing levels. And then more scattered, uh, possibly mixed stuff up here, but of light varieties above about 6,000 feet. Same thing for the Aleutians, except even less. No icing for the southeast coast. 
Central Eastern Interior, North Slope and Arctic, coast icing free. And for the jet stream, upper level ridging here, good southwest flow, 140 knots. And this whole southwest flow thing is uh, pulling that moisture northeastward uh, at about 140 knots there. And then northerly is 120, so dry here for the southeast coast. Big trough out over the Bering Sea, followed by another ridge over the Chukchi, or the Sea of Okhotsk. And for 9,000 feet south to north flow, pretty brisk, 50 to 60 knots here ahead of that frontal boundary, increasing 30 to 35 uh, Kodiak Island into uh, Sitna Valley. And just uh, pretty light there, 5 to 10 knots, or 5 to 15 eastern interior, except up to 20 for the Panhandle. 3,000 feet looking uh, pretty windy as well with this low scooting northward. Uh, 40 to 50 knot winds across Kodiak Island and uh, Northeast Bristol Bay, followed by turbulence, widespread, moderate chop, especially for small aircraft, Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak into South Central Alaska, eventually into the Alaska Range. Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service with another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining me today are not just one, but two people, both with the last name Stevens, which is even more fun, but no relation. We have Eric Stevens from Gina mm -hmm. and George Stevens, who is a mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska mm -hmm. Fairbanks. Did I get that right? Yep. Awesome. And today you guys brought a really cool toy or I should say tool with you. It's a sandbox, but why are you guys working on a sandbox? Well, it's part of our senior design project, and we were approached by um, EPSCOR to build, build this from, for them. Mm -hmm. They uh, uh, had a proof of concept that they developed years, years, about a year ago, I think, and um, the, uh, uh, they, they wanted a more robust ver version that they mm -hmm. could pack onto a plane and take places. And it's a handy learning tool for kids and, all, and adults. So you're a mechanical engineering student. You've built a traveling sandbox for the experimental program to stimulate competitive research, EPSCOR, and Gina's facilitated this. But why do we need a traveling sandbox? Well, the, the uh, prototype was such a big hit that uh, they decided they wanted another one, actually two, that, they could act that would be easier to travel with, you know, um, possibly marketable even. Okay, so this is a traveling sandbox. It's got a lot of bits and pieces and, and a computer hooked up to it. What is the computer doing with the sand? The computer actually uses a Kinect sensor to read the topography of the sand or the shape of the sand, mm -hmm. which, and then the computer translates that into information which it projects using a projector onto the sand showing topographical lines and which is representative of the shape of the sand. Okay, so this is a live mapping tool? Yeah. It's interactive. As you're moving your hands through it, it is actively following and changing the lines to fit what you're doing. That sounds like something I could have in my backyard. Yeah. It'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> so you guys had to change the design a little bit to make this more Alaskified, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how'd you do that? Well, um, the original was made out of basically lumber and Simpson strong tie type mm -hmm. stuff. And we re rebuilt it to make it lighter and basic and basically more transportable we can pack it down to a fairly small size and it can be loaded onto a plane and flown anywhere in the state which you guys did today and you yep. have plans to take this in other places of alaska right yep we're actually going to be headed down to homer with it later today okay very good eric how mm -hmm. does this fit into uh science learning around alaska well you know what i think it is a tool and it is a toy and yes. it brings out a smile from an eight-year-old oh, yeah. and the smile from a 48-year-old oh, with yeah. that inner eight-year-old yes. wanting to get out. The, uh, the sandbox, it's an interactive learning tool that teaches us how topography in the three dimensions is related to, say, a two-dimensional map. More about that later. Just like George was saying, it's got a connect sensor, not just for video games anymore. It can sense out the, the lay of the land there, yeah. feeds that information in the computer. computer identifies that, sends a signal to a, pro a projector to send topographic land lines to map over that that uh, lumpy ground so right. you get a three-dimensional topo map out of it and my favorite thing about it this is the thing that stops people at the the trade show they stop at your booth and, and sure. don't leave is that you run your hand through that sandbox and it responds in in real time it remaps cool. the, top, the topography as you get to be mr tectonic plate drifter <laughs> there you can make things how you want well what if we made a really high mountain here in a low valley there and the lines adjust to what you did, 
it's a learning tool because it, yeah. it shows you that connection between these two-dimensional topo lines and, and what's really out in Alaska. And Alaska's a place with all kinds of topography. Mm -hmm. You know, we're from the Great Plains where your topo maps tend to be just like blank pieces of paper, but Alaska is particularly gifted in this regard, and, and this tool helps us, I think, learn more about our state, really. Absolutely, and so this is going to enha enhance uh, STEM learning, the science, technology, engineering, and math in, in many different uh, locations around Alaska, then. This would be something that kids and teachers can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. It sure is, and I mentioned the uh, it's, it's like flypaper at a booth that, <laughs> or, or at the uh, Science Potpourri, when we had Greg's original version of this sandbox, and okay. that one was made out of scraps of wood, and it, it was a prototype, but even that one, before it had some of the refinements that, that George and crew have made for this newer, right. um, upscaled, maybe a 2.0 version of the sandbox, okay. even that one was so attractive to people, it just demonstrated that this, this has potential to be a learning tool, an outreach tool, an education tool um, that can now is portable and can go places in Alaska. Um, of course, there's only one sandbox, can't be everywhere at once, but hopefully it gets out there, gets the word out about EPSCOR and, and what science is being done here for Alaskans. All right, that sounds really interesting, and I can't wait to get my hands in the sand and try this out for myself. Mm -hmm. We're going to demonstrate this here in our next segment of Alaska Weather Facts, but before we go, we want to remind you that EPSCOR, which is a, a new acronym for me now, but I'm going to remember this because you can follow them on Facebook and Twitter, and I invite you to do that. Alaska EPSCOR uh, is also uh, something that facilitates science learning at uh, the University of Alaska around the state, and that stands for Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. So check that out, and make sure you tune in tomorrow because we're going to have the next version where we actually get our hands in the sand and check out how this works and demonstrates that topography. So for now, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with this edition of Alaska Weather Facts and we'll see you again next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis. Uh, not looking much different from yesterday's, but uh, still some slow growth going on here along the uh, main ice field here all the way down to this uh, more southern area here, but uh, no big changes expected, or at least nothing of significance that would affect the uh, marine areas here along the Arctic coast. And for the coastal water forecast, north to northwest 15 knots on the south coast tomorrow seas, five to six feet. Pretty light winds up on the north coast, north to northwest at 10. And also 10 knot winds for Lynn Canal, North 10 also for Clarence Strait, Stevens Passage, uh, if you want to call it wind, north at five knots, two foot seas. And those uh, light wind conditions uh, continue, actually light and variable five to 10 knot winds over the inside waters through Sunday with uh, two foot seas and variable at 10 for the south coast here as well, if seas only four feet. And then starting to pick up a breeze here as you head north, 15 knots from the south, pick up to southeast 20 uh, knots with six foot seas in the afternoon. And for Prince William Sound, light easterlies tomorrow are variable to east, two foot seas, winds 10 knots, southeast 15 for the eastern north Gulf Coast. And we get into small craft advisories here for the western north Gulf Coast, east winds uh, coming up to 25 knots, even stronger here for the Barren Islands at 30 knots, and even stronger minimum gales for Kamishak Bay tomorrow, east 35, seas 12 feet, northeast 20, southern Cook Inlet, and northeast 15 for northern Cook Inlet. Outlook for Sunday, northeast 20 here, north of the Forelands, south of the Forelands, north 25, good for small craft advisories with six foot seas. Gales continue and, uh, through the weekend here for the Kamishak Bay area, east at 35, south winds. 30 knots, 11 foot seas there for the Barren Islands and southeast winds, 30 knots for the North Gulf Coast with those seas up to 9 feet and Prince William Sound, big increase in the winds, east 30 knots with uh, seas 5, maybe 6 feet. And for Kodiak Island, east side, southeast 25, seas 10 feet, Shelikoff Strait, east of 25 with 7 foot seas. And then from, uh, we've got 30 knot winds here from Sitkanak to Castle Cape. And in the case of the area from Castle Cape to Sitkanak, they'll be out of the south, otherwise southeast 30. And lighter winds on the north side of the peninsula, just 20 knots from the southeast. And also Bristol Bay, southeast at 30. And the outlook for Sunday, west-southwest, 20 knots for the peninsula here with seas running 6 to as high as 9 feet on the Pacific side of the, of the uh, peninsula. 
And then Small Craft Advisories West 25, sees 10 feet on up to Sitkanak. Southwest 30 knots there for the east side of Kodiak and only 20 knots for Shelikoff Strait, Bristol Bay, west at 20. And for the Fox Islands, uh, Unalaska Island, northwest 10 to 15 knots, Umak Island, west, southwest at 15, with uh, seas not too bad, about six to, well, maybe eight feet, that's good for small craft advisories. Central Aleutians, light winds, southwest 15 to 20, and 15 knot winds, west of Adak all the way to Shimia. And then on Sunday, west 20 knots from Shimia toward Adak and Chitka Island, 20 knots, 7 foot seas, 15 to 20 knot winds for Adak and Atka with uh, 6 to 8 foot seas or so. And west winds 20 knots for the Fox Islands with seas 6 to 8 feet. And the southwest coast, south of Nunavik Island, southeast at 20, south 15 along the Yukon Delta coast, and then 20 knot winds up across St. Lawrence Island, St. Matthew Island. Light northerlies for the Prairie Bluffs at 10 knots with 8 foot or 6 foot seas. West 15 in store for the Prairie Bluffs on Sunday. Southwest 15 here in toward Kuskokwim Bay. West 15, St. Lawrence Island and the Northern Bering Sea right into the Yukon Delta coast at the same speed as well as Norton Sound. Arctic coast, uh, southern, or central coast here, central and east side, south 15 knots, 3 to 4 foot seas. Winds increase as you head west, especially from Point Lay on down. Uh, sustained 25 knot winds from uh, Wales all the way up to Cape Beaufort, and for Sunday, lighter winds, east 15, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, southeast on the central coast, back to east at 15, and then 10 to 15 knot east southeasterlies from Cape Beaufort to Wales. For tonight, again, this front edges inland and begins to weaken. Light rainfall amounts in areas there. Some areas may not see much at all, and uh, mixed precipitation possible north of the Alaska range, or north of the Brooks Range here, dry over the eastern interior and panhandle. Tomorrow, sunshine, southeast coast, up the east side. Heavy rains moving in from the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, into southern Cuscombe Valley and the southwest interior. And that low tracks northward to the Arctic coast. This one tracks eastward, bringing the heavy rains to the north Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound Sunday afternoon. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.